Salut tout le monde, c'est Koto et aujourd'hui on se retrouve pour une petite analyse du gameplay de la première mission de Black Ops 2. Le gameplay que vous voyez est différent de celui qui était à la conférence de Microsoft à l'E3 2012. C'est en fait un interview de Marc Lamia qui est au passage le directeur des studios Treyarch. Et IGN ont pu obtenir un gameplay de la même mission mais on peut voir que les actions prises dans certaines situations sont différentes des actions prises dans le gameplay de la conférence de Microsoft. On commence tout de suite avec une annonce qui a été faite juste avant que le gameplay soit montré et malheureusement les joueurs PS3 n'auront toujours pas les DLC en même temps que les joueurs Xbox. Je pensais que vraiment que Activision allait faire plaisir aux joueurs PS3 en refusant le contrat de Microsoft qui normalement se finit en fin d'année mais je peux avoir tort car ils vont peut-être changer ça plus tard parce que le contrat dure deux ans et ces deux ans ne sont pas encore passés. Voilà maintenant on va entrer dans le vif du sujet. Après avoir vu le gameplay j'ai été surpris par le changement apporté à Call of Duty en général. Ils ont vraiment pris un risque énorme en changeant la base de Call of Duty. Beaucoup de personnes font leur troll en prenant l'aspect futuriste du jeu, mais après ce que j'ai vu, l'intégration des éléments futuristes est parfaite. Beaucoup de personnes ont pensé qu'il y aurait des robots partout avec des lasers et tout, mais non, les seuls éléments futuristes qui ont été intégrés dans ce gameplay étaient les armes, les quadrotors, les véhicules et l'interface. Une autre chose qui a changé, c'est l'éclairage et la couleur. Je ne sais pas si vous pouvez bien voir la différence sur cette vidéo, mais si vous avez vu les photos en HD, la couleur a vraiment changé. Et les armes ont un mix de Modern Warfare et Black Ops, avec le viseur et l'animation qui ressemblent beaucoup à celle des armes de Black Ops, et le design des armes qui ressemble à celle de Modern Warfare. Beaucoup diront que les graphismes sont les mêmes et ils n'ont rien foutu sur l'aspect graphique, mais honnêtement, je m'en fiche totalement des graphismes du jeu. Un truc que beaucoup de personnes oublient, c'est que Call of Duty est connu pour son gameplay intense et pas pour ses graphismes. Des jeux comme Crisis et Battlefield sont connus pour leurs graphismes, mais honnêtement, qui regarde les graphismes du jeu pendant qu'ils sont à fond dans le jeu Enfin bref. Que le jeu ait pas changé son moteur graphique, je m'en fiche. Pour moi, tout ce qui compte dans un Call of Duty, et j'espère que vous partagez le même avis, c'est le gameplay. Et si Call of Duty en est là aujourd'hui, c'est sûrement grâce à ça. Bon, maintenant on va parler des armes qui ont fait leur apparition dans les gameplays. Je vais vous citer les, les armes très rapidement, alors il y a le XM8, le Storm PSR Sniper avec un viseur X-Ray, le Type 25, un Vector K10, un pistolet mitrailleur qui ressemblerait au FNG9, et je dis bien FNG9 et pas FMG9, mais aucune confirmation. Et un RPG. Donc le XM8 est une arme qu'on avait déjà identifiée sur le trailer et après ce que j'ai vu, c'est une arme assez facile d'utilisation. Ensuite, il y a le sniper qu'on a aperçu et ça a fait beaucoup de bruit sur les forums de JVC et leur communauté de Kikula. Bon non, plus sérieusement. Beaucoup disent que l'arme est cheatée et que c'est trop nul et, et voilà. Et qu'on peut pas faire de quick ça aussi, <rire> etc. Mais ils oublient qu'il s'agit que d'un gameplay de la campagne. Et je pense même pas que le Viseur X-Ray sera disponible dans le multi. Mais s'il y est, je pense pas que les développeurs sont assez cons pour intégrer le Viseur en accessoire. Je pense plutôt que c'est un, un élément du jeu euh, intégré en killstreak. Et ça sera sûrement un killstreak de 12 ou même 15. à moins que le sniper perd en puissance quand le viseur est utilisé. Assez parlé du sniper. Ensuite nous avons le type 25. J'ai rien à dire sur cette arme. D'après ce que j'ai vu elle est assez cool. Le vector K10 qu'on n'a pas vu en action. Donc j'ai rien à dire sur cette arme. Et pareil avec le reste des armes. L'autre truc euh, qu'on a pu voir, c'est la campagne non linéaire. Si vous avez vu ce gameplay et l'autre qui était dans la conférence de Microsoft, on peut voir que c'est totalement différent. C'est une des choses qui va faire la différence et qui va innover les Call of Duty à venir. La dernière chose que j'ai vraiment aimé, c'est la séquence dans l'avion de combat qui est le FA-38. Et d'après ce que j'ai vu, on peut avoir le contrôle total de l'avion, ce qui est vraiment épique. Donc voilà, c'est tout ce que j'ai pour le moment, n'hésitez pas à donner votre avis dans les commentaires et pourquoi pas dire ce que j'ai manqué sur le gameplay. Je vous laisse regarder le reste de ce gameplay avec l'interview de Marc Lamier qui est malheureusement en anglais. Allez, à la prochaine. Does it exist today or could it exist today? And maybe it's in a larger form factor because processing power hasn't caught up. And if you have to think about technology, think about computers, think about technology, things that start in bigger form factors, how they get into smaller form factors. You can see that with this sniper scope where you have sort of uh, the technology that can see through things. Well, we know that we have that technology right you now. You see it in airports all the time. Act. That's right, that's right. You, you put your hands over your head and it's swirling you know, around you and it sees through things. Um, And uh, you know uh, the ability to have electronic 
um, uh, uh, charging of, 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 weapons, so, of weapons so you can fire multiple rounds. That, that sort of you know, exists right now in a very large form factor with a, with a metal storm. So every single piece of technology has a backstory, has to be plausible, has to, be, has to feel like, yeah, a little more than a decade out, this, this is plausible. This is, this, this, uh, this is a piece of technology that can exist. And, and, 10 years, and 10 to 13 years out from now, you'll see familiar technology that exists today. Right? You'll still see that. We see that today, right? There's weaponry and technology that exists from 13 years ago that's still in use today. But it might have um, attachments or things like that that advance it, that keep it around. Because it, while, while it may be a, a useful uh, tactical weapon, um, you need to have some technology to, to help you advance it and, and, and keep it in play. I think this is the area, too, that we're seeing uh, in this sort of downtown scene also shows a lot of the cool stuff you guys have been doing with uh, particle effects, making smoke effects look even better than they ever have before. You know, fire, destruction, uh, environmental uh, uh, animations, those are all critical components to, to making that world feel alive and believable and just epic and cinematic, like you're literally in the middle of it. So every Call of Duty game has always been about, you know, Everyone thinks of them as just first-person shooters, and yeah, that, that is a, a big part of the game. Um, you know, but I think people make a mistake when they think that you're always on foot. You know, they always just have this idea that you're a guy holding a gun. So much of it involves like these set pieces where you're using vehicles and stuff like that. And so, what we're going to see shortly is is kind of a a, a kind of different feeling vehicle sequence than we've seen in other Call of Duty games. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you're about to go inside and and take over this VTOL right here. Uh, and you're going to fly it, you know, it's not, you're not going to be, it's not on, it's not a rail where you're just going to be firing the weapon, you're going to be flying it. And there's actually two different gameplay mechanics we introduce uh, to you in this one vehicle. It starts off as a VTOL as you're going to be flying through, that's what's going to be happening when you first start playing the game. And don't forget, in this single level, you've already driven. Um, as the freeway was collapsing. So there's just, I think in general, one of the things that we really wanted to do with this level is give players a ton of variety of gameplay. Not only do you have that weapons gameplay, but there's some great vehicle gameplay. There's a lot of new mechanics and a lot of fun for players. So, you know, as you're flying through Los Angeles here, uh, clearly it is, uh, it is it has undergone a lot of destruction. Um, the t you can see the particle effects and the lighting and the smoke, and it's just, you know, uh, an incredible amount of detail that's going into this, and you're flying through it. You're protecting um, the president's vehicles down below. Um, you're firing those cannons. You have really destructive missiles. Um, you'll just see, uh, you know, the whole world is really coming down around you. Um, it's really this sort of, uh, you know, has this, like I said, almost sort of Armageddon-ish type feel, where it's like this is almost the end of the world type type uh, look here. Um, you see the enemies, um, you can take them out, you, you know, you f if, you fire, if you're firing rockets or, or, or weapons, things in the world, you see, you see things collapse and, and, and fall, um, you know, whether it's the, uh, you know, whether it's the vehicles or whether it's the, the, the structures in the world, uh, they take damage. Um, so it's just this really epic and cinematic piece. And, and like I said, you're moving through as a VTOL, so it's a vertical takeoff craft. You, you have a great degree of control over it. You have your two weapons. Um, you have an objective. You need to protect this vehicle. And so this part that we're seeing too, I mean, you know, this is obviously very different than, than Black Ops 1, but what I think a lot of people don't realize when they see this is that even though this is taking place in the future, uh, for the most part, the system, the part we're seeing is taking place in the future, though there will be parts of the game that take place in the past, is that this is a direct continuation of the first Black Ops. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, you'll be playing in the late 80s with the characters that you played with, with Black and Black Ops, Mason, Woods, and Hudson, and that those are going to be the stories um, that take place during the uh, the first Cold War, where we juxtapose this this Cold War from the past with the Cold War that takes place in the future, which this villain here, who is who's created this incident in Los Angeles, this attack, he is stoking the fires of this new Cold War. A new Cold War that's between the United States and China. Yes. Over over what are known as rare earth elements. That is one. Of, that is at the heart of one of the the conflicts. You know, to, uh, we we keyed in on this on this element called rare earth elements, which are in all of our advanced. Uh, They're in every drone we're seeing. They're in every screen. drone we've seen. They're probably in your pocket, in your smartphone. They're in your they're in your laptops, and 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 in reality, uh, you know, most of those are are most of the rare earth elements come from China. So in our fiction. Um, uh, you know, as you have this villain who's stoking the fires of this Cold War, 
um, you know, it becomes a, it can become a problem sort of at the heart of the conflict, much like you see with oil today in today's conflicts. So there's this other part here that we're showing you where you're going to be flying uh, the, this VTOL at one part and not just not just using it as a vertical takeoff craft, using it as a jet, and you are flying through through Los Angeles and yeah, you're I mean, warping through, and it's intense. There's nothing like this in any of the other Call of Duty games. There is nothing like this in any of the Call of Duty games. I mean, you are fighting, you have cannons, um, you have missiles, you are flying, you are you are you know you're bursting through it, and you know. You're flying through all these all these buildings. It's just a really intense uh, experience. So that's a quick look at Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Thank you so much, Mark, for letting us see what you guys have in store. It looks really great. Can't wait to uh, show you guys more in the future. Eject, eject.